Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Jack and I know many of you that are subscribed to this channel have a very deep interest in CBD and I recently wrapped up that whole series about the entire gut biome. I hope you guys found that helpful. So I figured I'd do another video on CBD because I've been getting quite a few questions surrounding CBD and fertility. And so I hope to kind of fill in some of those gaps in knowledge as well as kind of present what my research has shown in regards to how safe CBD is to take surrounding fertility and breastfeeding and things of that nature. In this video, we will briefly kind of compare THC to CBD, uh, especially around the time of trying to get pregnant, if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. And we'll also kind of briefly touch on the endocannabinoid system, body's own cannabis system, as well as cover what certain organizations like the FDA or the Food Drug Administration and the Surgeon General, as well as the American Academy of Obstetrics and Gynecology and what their stance are in regards to CBD and THC surrounding um, fertility issues. And so without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. So throughout my videos, I've covered CBD uh, quite extensively. We've discussed things like how it helps with anxiety, as well as insomnia, inflammation, and pain issues, as well as looked at studies focusing on how scientists today are looking at the possibility of using CBD to help treat cancer, as well as neurologic disorders. I did that video on Alzheimer's and CBD, as well as other neurologic disorders, um, such as MS or Parkinson's and seizures disorder has even been looked at as possibly a new form of antibiotic. The research involving cannabinoids, especially CBD, is just moving at a breakneck pace. It seems like every week new things are being discovered, new articles are being put out. And even though we have discussed all of this in the past, one area that I have not touched upon is fertility. And so what does the scientific literature, at least uh, the most recent one as of June 2021, say about fertility, uh, especially in regards to you know somebody trying to get pregnant or is pregnant or if you already had a baby and breastfeeding and whether or not it is safe to take cannabinoids. So when it comes to THC, the answer is pretty straightforward. However, when it comes to CBD, it's a bit more complicated. And for those of you who don't know, just real briefly, CBD and THC are two cannabinoids from the cannabis plant out of probably over 150 different ones. Scientists are always kind of discovering what they do and how they work and how they work synergistically helping each other, as well as dissecting all the other parts of the cannabis plant such as the terpenes that are in it, as well as flavonoids. If all that sounds like a foreign language, I apologize. Uh, it's sort of a complicated topic. I suggest just checking out previous content that I've created to kind of fill in the gaps, especially the one about how CBD works. And the important thing to know is that THC is typically associated with marijuana and it is what gets people the euphoric effect and CBD does not do that. If anything, it is the anti-THC because it actually dampens that euphoric effect. Both of them have been found to have various uh, health benefits, uh, but the main focus has been CBD. And with the Farm Bill in December 2018 um, being sort of redone, has allowed CBD to be mass produced and people are finding all of the health benefits of this particular cannabinoid. And the FDA even has approved a CBD concentrated pharmaceutical grade drug um, called Epidiolex. And it's the only FDA approved CBD drug at this time. And it basically is reserved for children with uh, a special type of seizure disorder, such as Dravet's disease. But that's just sort of a real quick overview. Again, I suggest checking out previous content to kind of fill in the gaps. But moving ahead in regards to the topic at hand, when you look at the stance from the Food and Drug Administration or the FDA, as well as the Surgeon General and the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. When it comes to THC, the answer is pretty clear. You just steer clear of it, basically. It is strongly suggested not to take that, and the reasons are because of the following. So THC can enter the fetal brain from the mother's bloodstream. It can also disrupt the endocannabinoid system. And the endocannabinoid system is basically your body's own cannabis system. Uh, for those that don't know, your body actually has its own system that helps to regulate every other major system within your body. And your body actually makes its own cannabinoids too. So isn't that cool? Your body actually makes its own cannabis molecules. And we'll kind of dive into that here shortly, but it can disrupt the endocannabinoid system, which is important for a healthy pregnancy and fetal brain development. 
development. And studies have shown that marijuana usage in pregnancies is associated with adverse outcomes, including lower birth rate. And the Colorado Pregnancy Risk Assessment Monitoring System reported that maternal marijuana use uh, was associated with a 50% increased risk of low birth weight, regardless of maternal age, race, ethnicity, education, and tobacco usage. And also as sort of a side note, if you are someone who has had a baby and you're breastfeeding, uh, THC has been found to be within breast milk up to six days after usage. So when it comes to CBD, it's sort of a different story, however. It gets complicated for several different reasons. And first off, it's important to note that the FDA stance is that you should avoid both THC and CBD. And the American Academy of Obstetrics and Gynecology actually does not have a stance on CBD specifically. And the FDA does admit that this is a complicated topic and they just simply don't have enough data to either point them in one way or the other. And so naturally it would be wise to err on the side of uh, being more conservative. However, what we do know is that if you give animals high concentrations of CBD, it can cause issues with the reproductive systems of male fetuses. CBD is also known to transfer to some degree through breast milk as well. It's also been shown that the endocannabinoid system plays a role in sperm output as well as motility and viability. Just as sort of a side note in regards to the endocannabinoid cannabinoid system, the THC molecules actually bind directly to the endocannabinoid system. However, CBD does not. It works through sort of these indirect other pathways. So it's part of the reason as to why we are not sure exactly how it affects fertility because it's a bit more complicated. But what we do know is that it plays a role here, but there just isn't any data to have been shown to truly help or hinder this entire process. A study showed that women have increased anandamide during ovulation and anandamide is one of the body's own cannabis molecules that is produced or what's known as the one of the endocannabinoids the other one uh, that's commonly mentioned is called 2-AG and so low anandamide can affect the ovulation process. CBD can increase anandamide by decreasing the breakdown by the uh, enzyme which is known as just for short FAAH and therefore indirectly it can boost your body's own cannabinoid molecule. However, some evidence has shown that after implantation, the body actually wants lower anandamide levels afterward. And so the timing of the anandamide levels does seem to play a role as well. So what about when it comes to males and specifically how sperm functions? And by the way, uh, that was why I chose a shirt. I figured it might be the chant of uh, the male sperm. So I figured it was appropriate for this video. And uh, what they found is that within a particular study, they discovered that there is a receptor called the GPR18 receptor. And this receptor is found within the sperm. And it is also tied to the endocannabinoid system. They concluded that CBD actually plays a role in a particular reaction called the acrosome reaction. So what is that? Essentially when a egg and a sperm get together uh, or make contact, the sperm has to penetrate the very hard shell of the egg. And this occurs through this particular reaction. And if the sperm does not get into the egg, then obviously no fertilization would occur. And therefore this enzymatic reaction is really important. And also as a side note, it's important to mention that the FDA states that hemp seeds are actually harmless. Within hemp seeds, there are very trace amounts of THC and CBD during sort of the processing of it, but it is not enough to matter or cause any type of health issues. They basically label it as generally recognized as safe. And while we're on the topic of the amount that someone is exposed to and how it makes a difference, that is part of the issue actually. The issue being that with all the research and everything else, we still don't really know in regards to dosage or frequency as well as what cannabinoids do what specifically. And so it's a very complicated topic and one that definitely needs more research to figure out, okay, well, at low dosages, it might be okay, but at higher dosages, it might end up being more dangerous to individuals. And I've sort of pointed this out in previous videos in regards to whether or not CBD interacts with the liver or causes drug-drug interactions in the past, how it's a lot more prevalent at higher dosages and not too prevalent at the lower dosages. Um, and clinically, I have hardly seen it at all when uh, it's taken at the lower dosages. It's important to talk about all this because it may actually be beneficial as well surrounding fertility issues. And one of them, as mentioned before, is your body's own cannabis 
endogenous molecules, the anandamide molecules, and how ovulation and increased anandamide levels are actually seeming to go hand in hand and be important in the process. And one thing that immediately comes to mind is when I think of how many people I've known that basically stress and anxiety seems to be a major cause or roadblock to them ultimately getting pregnant. And some of you may have heard those same stories and I'm talking about people that they are trying and trying to get pregnant and they cannot. However, the stress of it and the anxiety of it just kind of builds each time they try and ultimately they are not successful. However, they go on some vacation and they de-stress and the next thing you know, they're pregnant. Or also the story of people where they try and try and cannot and they even seek a in vitro fertilization specialist and still cannot get pregnant, but then they adopt a child and all that stress of off is off of them and then suddenly, bam, <laughs> they're pregnant. <laughs> so, surprise. <laughs> and uh, so stress is going to play a very large role here because your stress causes a hormonal imbalance and whenever you're releasing stress hormones such as cortisol, it is never really good for the body. And if you think about it on a evolutionary scale, it makes sense, right? If your body and your mind is stressed and it's releasing all these stress hormones and causing this hormone hormonal imbalance, then it's probably not the best time from a sort of survival standpoint to be pregnant or have a child. Because as I've mentioned in past videos, CBD actually can help stimulate serotonin receptors or the feel-good hormone receptors. And that actually can play a role in de-stressing uh, as well as decreasing anxiety and hence leading to less of a sort of tense state or increased release of the cortisol and causing that hormonal imbalance. So in scenarios like that, if you are taking say a full spectrum, high quality CBD product and that leads to a decrease in stress, then I can't see that possibly helping in that scenario for getting pregnant. And that is sort of compared to if you're taking say a benzodiazepine medication, and those of you that follow the channel or watch my previous video, where I talk about things like Xanax or Valium and talk about drugs of that nature and how they can have sort of long-term detrimental effects. However, again, just to be clear, I do believe that those drugs help individuals, but uh, they do have their downsides. And just as a reminder, it is extremely important that you do your homework as to what CBD brand or company you end up going with. Because there is no F FDA regulation or oversight within the CBD space or cannabinoid space at this time, everyone and their mother is making CBD. How However, the quality and the safety of the product runs a pretty wide gamut. You could purchase a CBD product and in past videos I've discussed how you can find things like microbials like fungus, bacteria, or mold within them or has pesticides or heavy metals and or doesn't even have the CBD that it says is in there or actually has THC in it when it says it does not. You really need to do your homework and for more information on that I suggest checking out my video on what makes a high quality CBD product because it really starts there because even if the data isn't conclusive about CBD and all these other things, well, the data on things like heavy metals and pesticides, uh, obviously it goes without saying that that is not good to have in your system um, when it comes to trying to get pregnant or if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. So just kind of wrapping all this up, if you are someone that's looking to get pregnant or if you're pregnant and breastfeeding, then avoid THC. However, with CBD, it's sort of a different, more complicated answer. And each circumstance has to be taken sort of separately. And there are many factors to consider as well. And the fact of the matter is, is that we just have too many unanswered questions at this time in regards to all of the details, especially when it comes to safety and efficacy, as well as the science behind all of this. And as always, with anything that is said on this channel. The suggestion is to speak to your healthcare provider and do your own research on this topic. You should weigh the risk and benefits of all the other alternatives, taking into consideration the overall picture and what the long-term risk and benefits are ultimately. And I'll close with this remark. If you're someone who is watching this video and you're trying to get pregnant or say you were pregnant but unfortunately suffered a tragic miscarriage, you know, I've done anesthesia for cases like that. It's always very, very heartbreaking uh, to watch and 
and especially as a parent myself. And my own suggestion is to continue to stay positive, keep trying. Uh, you'd be surprised how often and how difficult it is for many people to get pregnant. And just realize that the joy and love that you'll experience one day after you become a parent is well worth it. Well, that is until they pee and poop on you and turn into little monsters. But at that point, uh, they are a non-refundable product. And so you're kind of stuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but even with that, you know, I suggest just keeping your chin up and sticking through it because every minute that takes by is one that you cannot get back and just cherish every moment of it because it really does go by within the blink of an eye. And so I hope you guys have found this video helpful and at least I have helped stimulate conversation as well as you going about doing your own research and perhaps having a talk with your healthcare provider. And so till next time, take care, stay safe. Bye bye. Pura vida. It's part of the reason why we're not sure how it so it's part of the reason as to why we're not sure how so it's part of the reason as to why so so it's part of the reason as to why we are not sure exactly how it